Hey, what's up, everybody? We're back for another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. This time it's episode 81, and this is the only place to hear the best conversations about the martial arts. Today we're going to talk about how to properly warm up and cool down for a workout. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, if you didn't know, makes the world's best sparring gear and excellent apparel and accessories for practitioners and fans of traditional martial arts. I'd like to welcome our new listeners and thank all of you that are listening again. If you're not familiar with our products, you can learn more or buy over at whistlekick.com. All of our past podcast episodes, show notes, and a whole bunch more are on a completely different site, and that's whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. From either of those websites, you could sign up for our newsletter, and you really should. We offer exclusive content to subscribers, and it's the only place to find out about the upcoming guests for the show. Like I said, today's episode's all about how to warm up and get ready for a workout, and at the end, we'll talk a little bit about cool down. So what is a warm-up? When people talk about warm-ups, let's just get on the same page. When we talk about warming up, we're talking about that part of that period of time before you actually get into the meat of your workout, before you start training your forms or your sparring or your basics, that piece that goes from zero to maybe not quite 60, but zero to some point where you're ready to go. And I think everybody at least inherently recognizes the importance of warming up, but not everybody does it. So why should you warm up? And there are really, there are a few main reasons. The first one is to reduce the risk of injury. If you just jump into a workout, whether it's a martial arts workout or any other kind of workout, you're really setting yourself up for, if not failure from injury, but at least from not getting as much out of it as you could. And by that, I mean, you've really got to set your your body up, especially your, your cardiovascular system. You've got to get that ready for the hard work that you're going to do. Because if you don't, the first portion of your workout is going to be spent getting your body into that state. And of course, a warm up is designed to do that, whereas the rest of your workout is expecting you to already be there. And for some of you out there that might be a little bit younger, you might be wondering, why is this so important? I remember thinking that in my teens and in my early 20s. Uh, I'm now knocking on the door for 40, and I completely understand the importance. The older you get, the more nagging injuries you have, the more important warming up becomes. And I'm also going to throw out there to the younger folks, the more diligent you are about warming up, the less you're going to need to warm up as you age. Yes, this is something like anything else you can condition your body into. Now, when I talk about the importance of warm-ups with others, one of the questions I get is, but what if my martial arts class doesn't offer a good warm-up? And I'm going to be blunt. Most martial arts classes do not offer a very good warm-up. Some offer a warm-up, um, and it seems to correlate with the length of the class. Classes that are 90 or 90 minutes or two hours seem to have better warm-ups because the instructors are more willing to spend that time. But for a class that is 45 or 60 minutes, they often spend very little time on warming up. And that's either because they don't understand the importance or they expect that you do it on your own. Now, if you're one of these people that has a class that doesn't spend a lot of time on warm-up, it's important that you make that time available yourself. Get to class early, spend a few minutes on your own, go over some of these things as best you can with the space and time that you have, and really set yourself up for success. I, I can't think of a better way to express what a warm up is other than it is preparing your body for success and receiving the most amount of benefit from your martial arts training. As I hinted before, uh, the more time you spend warming up effectively, the, I don't know if I want to say the less important it becomes, but the more tolerant your body will be for skirting over it a little bit, you know, maybe not quite putting a hundred percent of the effort in that you should. Maybe your body needs a 15 minute warm up now, but if you spend a lot of time over the next, let's say six months doing those 15 minute warm ups. Maybe your body suddenly will be, maybe not suddenly, will gradually become more tolerant of, let's say, a 10 minute warm up. So, the way I see it, there are really four parts to an effective warm up. You've got 
low risk cardio, joint mobility, intensifying cardio, and flexibility. And I'm going to break down all of those in a second, but we're really talking about a minimum of five minutes, not each, but combined. Um, and I think that any martial arts class can find five minutes to spend the time to give the students an effective warm up. If you are an instructor or a school owner, and this isn't an area of expertise for you, uh, listen in, do some research. It is critical. Okay. One of the things that I th I'm going to underscore a couple of times is that flexibility is where a lot of us think of for warm up. And heard that I just mentioned three other things that come before flexibility. And flexibility is the piece that, you know, as martial artists, we seem to hone in on because it allows us to kick higher and, and do things like that that are really exciting for us. So we're prone to spending a lot of time on flexibility if we have that available, but then we have just as much risk cooling down. Now we have all these loose, somewhat cold muscles. We're expecting that everything is is still up, our heart rate's elevated, and then we jump into a class and you just want to watch out for that. So we'll talk about that more in a, in a little bit. So what is low risk cardio, the place that you really want to start out? That's the first thing you should be doing when you step out on the floor. It's jumping jacks. Uh, for some of us, it might be push-ups. It could be bodyweight squats. It could be sit-ups. Basically, it's anything that gets your heart rate going a little bit, up, up to more than a little bit, to a lot, but doesn't risk some kind of injury. So I, I said push-ups for some people. Some people have shoulder issues. Some people need their shoulders to warm up before they can do, excuse me, before they can do push-ups well. Uh, jumping jacks are probably the safest one that I know. And if you do jumping jacks with some intensity, they can warm you up pretty well. For other people, uh, jumping or running, things like that, anything that's going to get you going. But the key is that it's got to be safe. It's got to be something that you can do. And as an instructor, as someone leading the class, leading the warm up, it's important to know your students. And, you know, this might be a time that is individualized. You might set people on their own for 60 seconds, 90 seconds, two minutes to say, hey, pick one of these three movements and don't stop doing them. Do them slowly, do them your best, just keep going, okay? Uh, joint mobility. That's really taking all of your joints all the way from your neck, all the way down through and going through your full range of motion, not necessarily the full range of motion for the joint, because again, we all have personal differences in what our bodies can handle. Uh, you might have sticky points or you might have an injury. You might have something that needs more warm up before you can really get going with a full workout or with something more intense, uh, e even in working in joint mobility. And the best way to think about joint mobility is circles. You know, I'm making circles with my wrists as I'm talking right now. I'm making circles with my ankle right now as I'm talking. Things like that. And they should be easy. It's not something you're forcing through a range of motion. But it's critical to get those fluids moving in the joints before we go on to our next step. Uh, joint mobility is also a great time to take notice of what your body's telling you. Uh, if you're feeling like a particular joint is a little rough, maybe it's Thursday or Friday, you've been training three, four days that week, and you know something's talking to you. I know it's a real technical term, right? But I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. If there's something that is happening within your body, because this joint mobility phase is a little bit slower, it gives you the opportunity to focus on different body parts and see, okay, hey, this is a part that I need to come back to during my cool down, or maybe I need to spend some extra time over the weekend or, or whatever, handling it. Now that third phase I mentioned is intensifying cardio. And I know that sounds really intimidating, but basically what that just means is you're gonna do something that brings your cardiovascular system up that as you get into that phase and deeper into that phase, it's gonna become a little more intense. So maybe that's moving from jumping jacks to high knees to jumping front kicks. I mean, something like that. Jumping jacks are pretty easy. High knees are a little bit more challenging. Jumping front kicks could be even more challenging, especially if you're trying to jump high. We're trying to start our body off with something that's easy and move to something that 
really gets a little bit of a sweat going, gets your heart rate really moving. And I think one of the keys here, especially if it's a class where we're concerned with the length of time that we have available, is that you really can incorporate a lot of martial arts into this phase. Uh, I've mentioned on this show before my love for kneeling front kicks. I, 10 kneeling front kicks on each leg will bring almost everybody to a point of, of, of I don't want to say pain. Uh, for, for some people, it's a painful movement. But at the very least, it's a very tiring movement to stand up with one leg and throw a kick and then come back down in a controlled fashion. So after this intensified cardio phase, we're at flexibility. And flexibility is another word for stretching. Why do we stretch? And there's really two main reasons that we stretch. The first is to reduce the risk of injury. And the second is to increase performance. And another way of saying increasing performance is to increase the range of motion. And that's the ability of your joints your, to move in a particular direction for a particular distance. Okay, I'm getting kind of nerdy here. But why we want to reduce risk of injury, that's pretty easy. Nobody wants to get hurt. Why do we want to increase range of motion? The more range that we have within our joints, the more capable we have, capability we have of doing things. Uh, if I can kick above my head, I don't have to kick above my head. I can kick anywhere from the gr ground up to above my head. If I can only kick to my knee, my ability to kick, my range that I can kick is obviously limited. And as martial artists, we're generally looking for some diversity, not just in our training, but in our tool set, what we can do, the things, the movements that we can perform and having better range of motion adds to that. When we talked about joint mobility, I mentioned that as thinking about it as circles. Think about your flexibility as straight lines. You're trying to move your whatever, your foot, your hand, your shoulder in some particular straight line most of the time. And I don't know, just a good way to think about it. That's how I think about it. Now, if stretching and flexibility is not your jam, if that's something that you really don't f fully understand, there's a ton of resources out there. Um, I'm going to look for a couple and put them in the show notes, things that seem like good primers, but uh, you, you almost can't find bad resources out there, especially if you have a basic understanding of the body. Bottom line, and any stretching resource you find should support these points. And if they don't, I'm going to encourage you to discard them because we don't know what else they're getting wrong. Stretching should not hurt. Uh, it should be uncomfortable. Okay, there's a big difference. If stretching hurts, you're running the risk of injury. All right. Dynamic stretching or ballistic stretching, I was first exposed to that in martial arts. It's something that at the time traditional science said was absolutely horrible. But over the last few years, we're starting to learn, hey, no, this ballistic stretching, if done properly, is actually a, a good idea. And I think the way that that's implemented in martial arts classes that most people are used to would be raising your leg in a in a straight motion, you know, a straight leg, um, sort of a front kick up in front. This is one of those rare times I wish our show was video, uh, or out to the side or, or, or to the back and doing that smoothly, um, not super slow, just enough that you can get some momentum from the movement and not holding it. Okay. So, Again, we're, we're not going to the point of pain. We're just trying to encourage our muscles to loosen up and ballistic stretching does a great job of that. Ballistic stretching can also be an opportunity to keep your heart rate up and keep moving after that intensified cardiovascular piece so our heart rate doesn't completely drop off while we stretch. And you can mix it up. You can move around, um, be creative. I, I think it's important to modify your stretching periodically, do different things in different ways because the more you do that, the more it's going to encourage your body to let go. I mean, that's really what we're asking our body to do is say, hey, let go of this part here that is kind of sticky or tight or however you want to describe it. So I can kick here or punch here or move in this way, you know, whatever it is. So how long should a warm up take? I think if you're really, really tight on time, you can do a barely effective warm up in about five minutes. Really, you should be working for about 15 minutes before you get into anything intense. And I'm going to say that applies in, in most exercise settings, whether it's weightlifting or running or martial arts. Now, I'm not 
I'm not going to call myself an expert in any of these fields, but of course, the place that I'm the most comfortable, the thing that I know the most about is martial arts. So I'm pretty confident in saying that five minutes is really on the short end and a good solid 15 minute warm up, if done properly, really sets everybody up for success. So how would I break that out? If it's a five minute, I would spend about a minute on that low risk cardio, those jumping jacks, things like that. If we've got 15 minutes, I'll bump that up to about two minutes. Joint mobility, same time breakout, a minute out of five or two minutes out of 15. Now that intensified cardio, this is where it starts to change. 90 seconds out of five minutes. If you've got 15 minutes, you can afford to spend five minutes. That gives you a great opportunity to start easy and maybe spend that last 60 or 30 seconds going fairly hard, getting a good sweat and really getting your heart rate going. Because at that point, that's where you're going to have the most benefit from your flexibility work, which 90 seconds to round out those five minutes or if you've got 15, I would spend six minutes there. Your heart rate's up, you're sweating, your body is warm, and that's where it's gonna be the most receptive to stretching, to the flexibility work. Now, if you do spend six minutes on flexibility, really, if you spend more than I'd say two or three minutes on some stretching, don't just jump right into a hard workout. Spend a couple more minutes just kind of bringing your heart rate back up and getting warm. You know, it's it's just as much injury prevention as it is anything else. You know, I, I've seen too many people start the first 5, 10, 30 minutes of a martial arts class off really slowly because they're just trying to get into a groove. And a lot of that can be shortened or even eliminated from a proper warm-up. The part where I see people get hurt the most is when they get through a good warm-up and then they cool off a lot without realizing it, you know, and that's, you can cool off while you're still sweaty. And I think that's important to realize. So uh, if you're on the fence, if you're unsure, have I cooled off too much? Just, you know, do another 10 push-ups, do another 15 squats or, or, or something. Just err on the side of caution. It's better to be a little tired at the end of the workout than it is to get hurt and not be able to train for who knows how long. So there's warm-ups. So real quick, let's talk about cool downs. Cooling down is really the best opportunity to stretch. At the end of class, you've put a bunch of time in. In theory, you are more warmed up. You are more loose, more sweaty. Your body is more receptive to that flexibility work than it was at the beginning of your class at the end of that warm-up phase. So cooling down, great time to do that. That low-risk cardio or some other cardio at a lighter pace, that's really a good time to work that work into that cool down. Maybe you want to do that, especially if you're coming off of something intense, like a bunch of rounds of sparring, something similar. Maybe you want to do that before you get into the stretching. And the more movement that you're doing without really high intensity, that, that kind of moderate to lower pace, that's going to mean less soreness or less risk of soreness, depending on what you've done. Um, I know a lot of people that do intensive exercise are used to this, you know, they might go off for a, you know, a five, six mile run and they may end it with, you know, half a mile of walking, you know, something like that. I know a lot of the accepted theory behind here is, is flushing out lactic acid. Uh, there's research that disproves that, but it's actually a great visual if we think about it, that we generate that work and that work as lactic acid or however you want to think about it in your body. And as we bring the intensity of the work down, it can move back to wherever it was it came from. Now, if your class doesn't organize a good cool down, there's nothing wrong with sticking around a few minutes after class. If you have the opportunity, if you're not getting kicked out, if you have the physical space, spend a good five minutes, maybe 10 minutes on a cool down, work on some of the flexibility, maybe notice what you can do with those points in your body that we're talking to you during your warm up, those sticky points I told you, remember, uh, especially during that joint mobility phase, you know, work on that. And I bet if you do, other people are going to join you. And who knows, maybe it'll become an organized thing within your class and everyone will thank you for that. So, what are your thoughts? 
is there something about warm up or cool down that maybe we didn't talk about or you want to explain a little bit more? Do you have thoughts, things to add that, you know, did we skimp over something? Is there something that you think we got completely wrong? Whatever it is, we want to hear your feedback. So go ahead, shoot us a message on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram. Username's always Whistlekick. Or if you don't want to do that, you can head over to the website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Leave a comment on the show notes. Remember, this is episode 81. And if you don't want to do that, you can go ahead, email us, info at whistlekick.com. You can also find all the shows over at YouTube, so you can check us out there. If you want to be a guest on the show, or maybe you have an idea for a topic, like today's topic, go ahead, fill out the form over on the website. And don't forget, subscribe to the newsletter. That way you can stay up on everything we're doing, get the discounts that we send out, all the things like that. But that's all for today. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.